Hey guys, Big Body Cars here with another uh, tech info video. Uh, I am dealing with a Pioneer Avic 6200 NEX. I don't think y'all probably can see that name there because the lighting in here isn't that good. I actually purchased for some one online, used, and was going to install it in a vehicle for them. Uh, before I decided to install it, I was going to do a quick firmware update like I do on all these Avic NEX radios because trust me, they need it. Um, and during the update from 1.0 to 1.07, the unit started to update and shut itself off. Come back up with a message that said, update failure. Please do not power off unit. Press home button to continue the update. Well, of course, the unit powered off, power back up, come up and says 0.0 to 0.0 and never did anything else. Dealt with that for about an hour. Went online, checked out forums, went to YouTube, checked out videos, etc., etc., etc. No real answers to self for people say you can send it back to Pioneer and Pioneer will fix it. And then we all know you don't want to do that, especially me knowing I bought this used. I didn't want to deal with the warranty and sear and all that. I bought this off eBay on a bid, got a pretty good deal on it. Have it sold to a guy for a pretty decent deal that's going to help him out. Probably lose the sale if it had to be in the mail for a two or three weeks to a month so uh, needless to say after reading a couple of forms I determined what the issue was I figured out a quick fix for this if you get the radio that has the screen that comes up and tells you that it has failed and you cut it off and try to do all that etc etc all you have to do is make sure you are using a cheap USB or USB, micro USB adapter, etc., etc. Make sure it's the cheap one. You do not want a scan disc or something replicable like that because I figured out what the issue is. These radios will not read those cars during a firmware update for the fact that those cars have a secret trash folder on them. Now, I could not locate this trash folder in my process of looking for it, but if you plug the card up, the USB to the radio before you do the firmware, It'll come up on the screen with a message here and says incompatible USB. And then once you actually go into the USB on the settings screen here and try to do the update, as you can see here, it'll read the card anyway. It won't tell you that it's uh, incompatible. It'll check it, say, hey, let's go, let's, you know, not going to work. What's going to happen is you're going to be like just like a cell phone and be in a boot loop. The radio will power up, tell you that it's not going to work. Hit the home button, come back. Find you a cheap one. What I did was I took this one here. Something I got from work. I don't even know what brand this is. This is just a 4 gig, no name, USB thumb drive I had laying around. I took it. I fat format 32 it on my, on my laptop. Just click on the thumb drive, right click. Format thumb drive, do the FAT32, and make sure when you do it, you do not do the quick one. They've got a quick format that'll do it in about 30 seconds. Don't do that. Uncheck that box, do the long format, takes about 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know what it does that's different, but it seems like it seems to make these thumb drives, especially the cheap ones, work better. With the radio powered off, plug your thumb drive back into the USB slot one, power the radio up. The radio will automatically come up. It will first display the 0 0.00 to 0.00. Then all of a sudden it'll say 1.00 to 1.007 like you saw in the beginning of my video. Let it do its thing. It takes somewhere, I don't know, maybe, I think this one took 5 to 10 minutes. And once it gets done, it'll come up and let you know it's done. And like I said on this one, we're good to go. GPS works. I don't have the antenna hooked up in the house. But as you can see, the GPS works fine. All my options work. My settings back. My screen's back. I'm back in business. And I probably saved myself the agony of trying to resell this thing if it wasn't ready to go this Saturday. So just thought I'd share that with y'all because, like I said, I went on the forums and I looked like crazy. I went on the uh, YouTube and there's one guy showing the message. And you can look up and see if that message matches yours. But nobody's actually showing how to fix this. That was the fix that worked for me. Like I said, cheapo, no name, USB thumb drive, probably preferable. You could do a micro SD, 
to the SD card, to the USB adapter, but in my opinion, that's probably too many things to go through. In this situation here, I get one directly and plugged into USB one. Make sure when you download your update file from Pioneer that you extract it and take the final file and move that over to the SD card where it's just one folder. Don't put anything else on it. Make sure there's no trash file, no boot loop, no security files. If any of that stuff's on there, delete it. You just won't. The whatever is one of them was named Havoc 5100 NEX. I think this one's like F1600 something. Once you extract it, it'll rename itself whatever Pioneer thinks it needs to be. You make sure you run that over there and you just drop that in that folder. You make sure before you do your thumb drive that it's FAT32 formatted and do it the long way. Do not take the quick one because it may work, it may not. It would not work for me. USB slot one on the radio if it has two USBs. Completely power the radio off. And what I mean by that, yellow, red, disconnected. Put them back on together where it completely loses the memory boots. It'll give you that first little message where it says 00.0, .0 at least that's what it did for me. Wait about 30 seconds and automatically realize that it needed to be the other 1.00 to 1.07 and I'm back in business. If you got any questions, leave comments in there. Like I said, I don't check this all the time, but anybody who followed my page know I will get back to your comments. I work, you know, a job, got a side job, I got five kids. I got travel ball going on, a little busy, but I do enjoy the questions and the communication with people. So if you have a question, feel free to leave one. I promise you, if it takes me a couple of days, I'll get back with you. Uh, but I hope this helps somebody out because I noticed a lot of people on these forums are posting that pretty much their option is to send this to Pioneer. And I don't know what that cost, but I've dealt with manufacturer before. And even if it's not the cost of sending it, it's the cost of not having it. No one wants to rip their whole dash apart and box a radio up and wait weeks to get it back because you're not a priority after this sale. I can promise you that. But again, if anybody got any questions, need help with this, man, please don't feel free to comment and I will, I will answer your question. It's been another Big Body Cars video, man. Y'all have a good one.